This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. All right, guys, so today we're working on a rooftop unit that is tripping breakers. It's two years old and uh, I figure it's probably something stupid, but let's go ahead and take a peek and see what's going on. That's an interesting way to do that. Let's hook a cable from the head unit to that pipe. You know, I really like this bag, but it feels like it's heavier than my MC backpack. And the whole reason why I kind of wanted this bag is I thought it'd be lighter. Now, granted, one of the other ones was being able to get right to my goodies and not having to go to the back side and the pockets on the side. I'm thinking about doing a review or a comparison between the two of them. Says he can run the blower, which I guess is a good thing. It's got that expensive, hard to get, that blue deal, which means this right here. <sighs> yep, it's the blue thing. We'll just check it to see if it's all right. It feels like it freely spins. Nothing looks to be rubbing on anything. Let's come over here and start probing our contactors and see if we can find the fastest short possible. Let's see what kind of juice we got here. This has been working out pretty good. Um, like I said, not as quick as my fluke, but it seems just as accurate. Um, the magnet, a little bit uh, too hard because like when you, you take it and you just kind of go like that with it, the magnet broke on the edge corner, but not a big deal. Obviously they don't make the magnet. You can pick AC or DC voltage, so but it's got auto, which I don't really like auto, but you can't pick your range. So not that I noticed. This is three phase, does have one capacitor that is blown. Well, look at that, imagine that, right? That would be for the compressor. Wow, that was hard. Well, let's go ahead and kill the power. Wait a minute, this is three phase. And we have a single phase disconnect. What kind of horse pucky is this crap? Is it three phase or single phase? Uh, it sure looks like three phase, but I'm not seeing a ground in here. That's ground. Okay, you tricked me. Somebody don't know what green tape is because they did that old half happy happy. All right, well, it's not three phase. That's because people don't know what blue, red, and uh, green is. Yep, <sighs> gotta love it. Let's go down here and make sure the old juice is not loose. No juice, no juice, no juice. All right, wow. Probably the most common thing that we get ridiculed over, <clears throat> bad capacitors that people sometimes charge outrageous crazy money for, but instead of just charging up front hourly prices, they try to make the capacitor sound like it's 300 to $600. That's the crap I keep hearing all these DIY channels that keep trash talking us. And uh, I think that's the reason why I've never have liked the flat rate pricing, because you never know what people's ability is on getting things done in a timely manner. So they end up pricing it with crap tons of labor on it. And I have no problem with us making good money at stuff, but that's what I don't like about flat rate pricing. You can give a quote, but you know, the way they do it, it's not rocket science. We just hyperinflate everything and then think that the customer's not smart enough to know that, and I don't like that. So that's your preaching for today. You kind of get it maybe slightly loosened up here so you can kind of work on it and get that screw back that I dropped. You got that one that I did the commercial stuff on where everything's like hanging everywhere. And then you got this one that made everything with the 600 wire ties on it. Brown is your fan, blue is your compressor. Yeah, see that happy uh, little alien spaceship right there? Me in China, China, made in China. 70 by 10, boy, that's a monster baby. Holy cow, that's a big one. You know what? I think I have an 80 on the truck. Now I know this is bad, but for demonstrating purposes, 
go ahead and come in here and go boom boom and nothing's happening go figure and go to shell to that nothing all right so it's garbaroni let me see if it got one to supply out so i may just go get it because i don't want to try to fit 15 capacitors in there putting them in parallel to do it all right so get this funny funny story our local carrier supplier doesn't have the capacitor from what i heard after talking to one of the other guys they don't even make the capacitor this motor right here takes a 10. why they use a condenser motor they would need a 10 is beyond me so what i'm doing now is double checking my filters to see if i need those that way when i go get something i can get it together now they have a 70 by five which is probably what i'm going to get and then it double up a five not horrible but they're definitely getting there i'll give him the option to get those replaced while we're at it all right so we've got our new filters here we'll get those put in like i said they didn't have the 70 by 10 but we did at least get a total line 70 by 5 and then they didn't have no five microfarads in stock either so ended up we used the mars on that stuff so we'll combine that together and uh, we'll be good to go on that. So let's go ahead and get the filters in. This is a, pretty much a beginner's call. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it in here just because it appears that some of this stuff for the new guys um, seem to enjoy it. I'm always trying to show some of the most difficult stuff that I find difficult so that other people would have it. And I sometimes think it doesn't do as good because there's more people doing this kind of stuff here than the other stuff. So uh, that's why I'm going to go ahead and leave this on here. And that way, if you think, why is he doing this call with a capacitor being bad? Um, because I'm going to show in basically that we should do more than just replace the capacitor and leave. We should find out if there's any other issues that would have caused it. If, uh, you know, if the system's working right, basically give them their money's worth while you're here. Go ahead and take care of that. So yeah, the filters that were in here were not completely plugged. However, you know, it, it has a pretty heavy dusting and would it take a crap in the middle of winter? And does he have us come out in the middle of winter or before winter? So why not just do it while you're here? So that's kind of the reason for that. I've got to build me a couple jumpers for the capacitors, which I forgot to grab because I had a phone call come in. I found that bottle of refrigerant up here. I think one of our installers probably left it here. So I'm gonna take that with me. Sometimes it can get windy up here. So as much as I don't really like having this here where it's at, we'll go ahead and do it just in case so that it doesn't possibly fall out. Okay, we've got the commons all on there, fans back on brown. Look how they made this so brain dead. Brown, brown, blue, blue. Um, Thailand, I'm sure that's better than China. Yeah, right. So we'll go ahead and get that on there, get that in place, and then we'll mount that other five up here in just a second. I went up on the top, didn't it? Yep, I went up on the top. So let's put it on the top. There we go. Where is that screw that I dropped? Probably right in the contactor, so it'll short. Where in the crap did it go? I'm gonna double check these contactors and see if their connections are tight. Especially these here where the yeah, it's usually loose. Guys that sometimes get stuck doing that have cheap pliers and screwdrivers and a lot of times don't get it tight because they, yeah. Save ourselves a problem for later. Let's also check our low voltage here. Let's see if it's really 204 with it being a commercial application. Chances are it's three phase here and it most likely is not. 240 volt. Let's see what we got here. We'll show you the capacitance check function on this meter. Here we go. We got to go into select. Milli mega ohms, milli ohms, regular ohms, diode, nanofarad. So now let's do it. And thousand one, thousand two, thousand three. So about three seconds, 4.998. I mean, it's got a hellacious uh, three decimal point here. So, I mean, it gets down to the nitty gritty. So, I mean, it's pretty precision. Uh, I forget what the spec is on how accurate that part is, 
but it's pretty crazy. Definitely has got more resolution than what my uh, 902 FC's got. It's got a few extra features I kind of like. So we're gonna go ahead and mount this thing right here, which we don't have anything behind the back of it. We can put our dates on here. We'll actually mount that thing so it's not dangling like the capacitor bandit or whatever you guys, some people call them. There we go. It's not going anywhere. My OCD is getting to me. It's uneven. That is a weirdo thing to say, but you know what? That is the weirdo things I do. So yeah, there you go. And now we'll go ahead and get this thing made up. So yeah, you probably could have got away with 16 gauge on this, but we're gonna go, uh, I think this is 12. So we're gonna make one for our common, bring her down to there. Make sure that's about the halfway point on the both of them. Yep, we're good. So, boom. There we go. Go ahead and make it about the same as the other one. So let's go ahead and do that. This is made in Germany, it's Philo. I don't know if I like it as well. I don't think, they got one made by um, Knipix, which was a lot more money than that one. Uh, this one does good on new wire, but does not do as good on certain different ones. So my Klein, uh, that looks like uh, multiple drill patterns and pulls apart, uh, catapult, I think is what they call it. That one um, does a better job on overall. But uh, that one there, without having to size it, stuff like that works out really quick and easy on that. So like I said, it works great for some of these. So there's one there. And yeah, blue is usually 14 gauge, but, and as usual, you should not be able to pull them off. That is a good crimp. Bring it down here, put it on the common. Sometimes I'll use my yellow crimpers but on smaller stuff like this, a lot of times I'll just use my clines, which these clines are not that great at stripping wire. They're a little too big for HVAC stuff. It says 16, but you know, that's probably why it doesn't do, a, no, it says 18 there. It just does not do a very good job on thermostat wire at all. So I found it better just to use the uh, cutting head. Now, come over here to the fan one. There we go. Putting them in parallel adds up, put them in series, makes them go down. Don't know the mathematical formula for the series one. Uh, it's not very often, I've never really ever done that. So now let's recheck it. Okay, we're going ahead and unhook the fan from it. That way we're checking just the capacitance of the capacitor. So we put it on there and we see what we come up with. 9.91, there you go. So, not exactly 10 like I'd like, but well, that's your high quality operations there. Then on the other one, just for making sure, let's go ahead and check the compressor one. Unhook the compressor. 1,001, 1,002, 70, 70.0. Beautiful. So we got that there. We got that mounted back up. Okay. And then we can strap that wire there to that little spot right there so it's not hanging out in front, possibly getting caught on something. Keeps things out of the way. We'll hook it on the, just the one there. That way nothing possibly rubs into anything. Fancy Nancy. And then we still need to find that screw that I dropped, which I have no clue where it went. All right, there's that screw. It must've fell down there. Mount it up. Now let's go ahead and kick on the power. Let's go ahead and put this cover back on. Yeah, it's a cheap disconnect, but whatever. It's adequate, it works. It ain't what I like, but it is what it is, it works. Okay, so power should be on. Let's check our voltage and see what our low voltage is. So our incoming is 244. You can see it takes a little bit of time to read it. Let's go up here and go R to common and 27.01, I'm good with that. Okay, let's go ahead and go on to 
amps. Let's go ahead and jump this thing to see if it trips the breaker or not. Or better yet, we could probably just push this contactor in. Fancy Nancy. Now, obviously it took forever for it to read it. Let's go ahead and turn on inrush, push it in. 172 amps on inrush. So you wonder why uh, the 30 amp fuse or 40 amp, whatever it is, it's on the trip. There's a reason why. Plus I short cycled it, which would have caused it to be higher. So let's go downstairs and get this thing turned on. All right, it came on. Let's see what this motor's rated at. 1.42. We're pulling 21.2, right at 60.00 hertz. That's total amps. Uh, let's see where that fan is at. That is most likely this black one right here that I can barely get to. There we go. 1.05, so we are below it, that's good. I think the cool thing about this is the way that it can kind of get in to tight spots by retracting. That's pretty strong, it's not whopper jawed or nothing. It doesn't have any metal cores exposed. Obviously they want somewhere between these two lines here. You've got for your DC amperage, you got an arrow pointing towards the power source. Uh, check out the capacitor side, 1.45. So if you check your capacitor amperage, okay, you got like about one amp going through that capacitor. And then grand total, you got 1.45. So yeah, go figure. So we checked low voltage, we made sure. Wow, that's starting to rust out already, ain't it? That's really holding up. Well, this place is a dry cleaning place, so they got a lot of nasty chemicals, a lot of nasty chemicals in here, and it will eat that stuff up in a heartbeat. Oh, look at that. That is not pushed in all the way. That kind of sucks. Got her nice and tight though, don't they? Holy cow, they got it nice and tight. Let's see if we can pound that back on a little harder and further. There we go. See, we could have walked away from that and it would have burned it off at eventually. Suction's not super cold or anything. It's, well, it's cold, but not really impressive. Make sure our cap's tight on that. Nothing's vibrating into anything. We got a before and after port for the filter dryer. That's kind of new. A little bit of an air gap over there. It's kind of interesting. Let's see if I can get away with using my 22 gauge. Now eh, we can use the 410 gauge. Yeah, that'll work. It's no hot. Actually, it's probably lower than half of them. Put that on there. Running 125 pounds. 125 pounds. It's gonna be dew point. Dew's low on the ground. Bubble is high, so it's high. So we're running a 42 degree evaporator. We're not doing a full blown check. I think what we're here for, we're here to get it to run. It was supposedly checked in the spring because the filters were changed, or at least the filters were changed then, even though those weren't the filters we normally use that I know of. But either way, we made sure that suction pressure is in the ballpark. We're not going for, you know, crazy checks here. We're just doing a quick check to make sure we're not missing something stupid that would cause a callback. So we can be pretty confident that we've caught any loose wires. Yeah, you could tear apart your disconnect down here, but that's probably original from 25 years ago. We know that all of our high voltage here on the contactor and stuff is tight. We know our transformer set at the correct voltage tap. Our low voltage is correct. Everything's tight there. And uh, we can feel pretty confident that we caught anything that uh, was something that needed to be caught. Go ahead and get her back together and get out of here. One of the things where I had an 80 by five capacitor on the truck, but that was bigger than we needed. Ballpark, if it would have worked, if you can be within, I think, 10% of what it's rated at, you'll get away with it for temporary. So fan speed, all that, he didn't have any complaints on that. So go ahead and get this back together, wrap it up. I think my next call is on an ice cream machine, which I purposely don't show much on that. So, because it's top secret squirrel stuff. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap this one up. It's an easy one, but that's the reason why I left it on here, because sometimes people like the easier stuff because you know they may not have all the experience doing all the bigger stuff that I like to do. So 
I do it all. It's just one of them things where I just choose not to show it very often because I don't want people to get bored. But just because it's boring to me don't mean necessarily it's boring to others. So you just got to sometimes keep that in mind. That is the reason why I'm going to probably start doing some more videos on some of the basic stuff uh, as far as wiring things and stuff like that. Just to kind of keep things uh, progressing uh, with something new, uh, at least with me doing it. So uh, I know some of the stuff's been covered in the past, but I'll do my own twist, my own thing. All right, until next time, guys, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.